The Long Haul Podcast, America's Irish Voice. Interviews with inspiring immigrants, renowned Irish personalities, and discussions on all things Irish America. Presented by Michael Dorgan. O'Donovan Rossa clinched the New York Ladies Junior Football title recently, marking the club's first piece of silverware since the ladies team was established in 2018. With dominant displays from forwards Barbara Ward and Clara O'Sullivan, Dermot Yorkside ran out comprehensive winners over a young Shannon Gales team on a scoreline of 4.15 to 3.6. Ward notched 2.6 while O'Sullivan bagged 1.4 as ODR came out on top in the battle of the Queen's Bay sides. Perhaps the loudest cheer of the day came for player and all-round club organiser Amy Brett who had spinal surgery just a few weeks earlier. Brett came on for a cameo appearance for the last minute which lifted the ODR crowd to its feet. Amy Brett has made her appearance on to the field people. Um, oh my god. Yeah is this a wise decision but no. look she's going on anyway. After coming back from back surgery she is going to stand on that field there's no stopping her. The ODR ladies setup is anchored by a massive social club of nearly 130 girls, many of whom made their presence heard in the Gaelic Park stand for the final. I caught up with Brett, Captain Lauren Hollywood and club chairperson Mary Egan after the game to get their thoughts. The result was kind of never in doubt. You pulled away at the start and you kept a big uh, cushion throughout the whole game. Did you expect it to go that well? We didn't expect it to go that way, but we hoped it to go that way. I think we all stood in this position last year and came in as runner-up, so we made sure this year we were going from the first whistle and we were going to keep going until the very end. So we've been called a second-half team before, so we tried to change that narrative today and it seemed to work, thank God. Uh, it was a big upset last year for you. You were playing that year, last year, Amy. You never got going at all last year, so how important was it to kind of right the wrong from last year? I think this year we were a bit we had more experience obviously when you've already gone through a final you know what comes with it and the unfortunately last year there was a devastating loss so we had done that already and we're definitely a team that learns from our mistakes so we said this year we're going to go out make sure that we weren't going to make mistakes like it's too late to leave it for the last 30 which is what we did last year so we wanted to dominate from that get-go and by god them girls left everything on the line and how much of the team was playing last year? Did you keep most of the panel from last year? No, we actually nearly have a 50-50. There, there was eight on the panel this year that started last year. And the panel, there's 60 girls that are registered in total. And there was 31 togged out today. Well, because you had a big, uh, big following in the stand as well. <laughs> That's our social range. Go on, the social range. Tell me, tell me about the whole, the whole organisation that goes into behind the club. I know there's a lot put into it. and uh, you want to... Yeah, there's so much that goes into it. Um, I only came on board this year and like to work with, I mean work, but like to, to be part of it with Amy and Lauren and all the girls, like it's, they deserved it so much today. Like so much work goes into everything on and off the field. And even the social aspect of it all, it's it's unbelievable. It's I said I sent Amy a text last night and I was like, you setting this up, you've changed so many girls' lives over here. Definitely has changed mine anyway for the better. So it's an honor to be part of this squad. Will you tell me about the whole social aspect of the club? Like I know Amy, I know she puts a lot of, a lot of work into everything she does, but there seems to be a kind of another dimension to the ODR ladies football team. Tell me about it. Yeah, 100%. Like I, I have best friends here now that I know will be my friends till till the end. Um, there's a massive social aspect of it. I think, like in terms. What of is this like? What do you? What do you well, so wait, like so we have two registrations. So you have player reg and social reg. Because I think a lot of girls come over and they mightn't have that competitive edge, and they might also be like, you know, oh, I'm not fit enough. I can't play football. So we really push that. You don't have to be like the, a grade yeah. A footballer, and like you can still come to the workouts. We try and do our workouts in Central Park once a week to give a bit of dynamic, and also that adds to the performance in the field as well because you can't keep doing the same type of training. But a big part of the success of OGR and why our numbers increase every year is because of our social reg and the fact that anyone can join ODR you don't have to be a footballer and a few of our players have come up through the social red rank and came in as like Stephanie Nugent prime mm -hmm. example last year she started in cornerback and she missed a few games this year at work so she wasn't able to talk today but she started as a social red the first year and came to the trainers and actually stuck at it and started in the final last year like and that's the way it works yeah. I think people have this notion of football especially when they're coming over from Ireland it can be technically taken more seriously at home and it's always the county girls and whatnot yeah. whereas here we just push that friends come first football comes second don't tell Dermot York <laughs> <laughs> and so how many 
people are in the social. Like I, I heard she have a big WhatsApp group and there's yeah. 90 people. I heard 120. Oh, I don't know. One, 127 <laughs> was the number I checked this morning. 127. 127 in total. Oh. Yeah. And there's always room for more. Uh -huh. So when there's social nights, you all turn up. And yeah. So then it's like open invite, but like it's open invite for training too. Obviously, some girls are like uh, allergic, absolutely not, and they're just there for the crack, which is what we embrace too, because like them supporters got us over the line at some point today. You could really hear them shouting, and especially in the semi-final. Yes. I feel like the supporters literally yeah. pushed us over the line. Like yeah. when it went we to extra time, could have lost that game yeah. if there wasn't the same support in the stand. Yeah, it was Bridget. She went to a replay against Bridget, so you're uh, battle hardened at this stage. Oh and I do think the semi-final probably stood to us because that extra game time definitely stood. But like to be, and I said to the girls in the changing room this morning. The fact that we're even here and we pushed through that semi-final last week and to, to get that second chance and to put everything on the line and I mean they went at it last Monday too and there was no doubt from the get-go who was going to win. Like OGR dominated most of the game even though it was touch and go but we wanted it more and the fight was there, the, the passion was there, the hunger was there and it came through this morning and it came through today and I think it's been there all week. It's just unreal. Uh, ODR is quite a young, or like it was only established a couple of years ago, wasn't it? In Queens, of course. Will you tell me about some of the background, the history of the club? So, so th this is our fifth season now. We were the first ladies Queens team to operate in uh, New York, and then Shannon Gales came in about two years ago. But we started, we met in the Wolfhound. There was eight of us at that original meeting, and that year we'd 40 Story, registered. Yeah. yeah, it was Story and Wolfhound was where we started. And it kind of just spiraled from there. The boys set up the team the year before, so they're in their sixth year, and they had reached out to Aoife Cannon and uh, another the girl Ashing Goldrick and they asked them well like would you have any interest or whatever and they're like yeah feck it so they sent out a text obviously stuck in the middle of everything I was like yeah <laughs> sign me up and then I said we need to get an email address going so people can send in inquiries and literally we set that up and by that weekend we had 40, 40 responses I think people wanted to play yeah. it just wasn't there you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's grown since then and so where will you go to tonight we will go back to Queens with Whoa. that cup baby <laughs> Bringing the cup home to Queens. I know, in fairness, we've got such great supporters. Like we're happy with, or we're so lucky we have Manhattan and Queens because obviously our girls are based between the two. So one of the OG supporters is the Wild Goose. We will definitely end the night there. Yeah. And then tomorrow, if there's a Monday club, um, Carl Louise have been so good to us. Daniel Yankee has been so good to us. Jerry Fox between Jerry's Place and um, Jerry's Place up in Eastchester have been so good to us. So like we're so lucky with the supporters and everyone in between that has just come in and roped in with us and just guided us along the way. And I mean, pumped money into the club and like small things, physio taxis, Ubers, like all that stuff costs money and we wouldn't be angry without them guys that I mentioned. Like how important is this this win to you and to the club to each of you? <laughs> I think, yeah. yeah. No words, <laughs> love, no words. Oh, like, I, you know, last year after we lost, it was just so devastating because we had worked so hard. And I mean, Leitrim were such a strong team and they're still such a strong team. So we literally left everything on the line. But this year, and I said to Dermot at the end of March, I was like, because I was trying to get him to come back. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm telling you right now, this team is different. Like, we're going to go all the way. And he's like, don't get ahead of yourself. I was like, I'm telling you right now, I just have, I just know it. Like, they're such phenomenal footballers. And then, and like, we had the excitement. We had the excitement. Well. It was just it. a great was, vibe this year. And yeah. all the energy was unreal and just thank God we got yeah, over the line. I know. Oh. We have to mention you were, you you, were, you got injured a couple of weeks ago, Amy. Just to give us a little, uh, tell us what happened and give us an update. I actually was playing a game. Well, it's five, uh, six weeks. No, it's not. It's actually two months ago now. I was playing a game and I got tackled, hit the hit the ground, and I ended up breaking a piece of my spinal disc off and it lodged against my nerves. So I'm actually out of football for the next two months. But I still got on for 45 she ran seconds. On today. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. I thought I was hearing things. I said, Amy Brent, did you walk onto the fish? <laughs> and Colette actually, as I get my slip, she goes, touch that ball and send you off. <laughs> I was like, I promise I won't. Barbara was coming down the side and I could see your hand pass the ball. I, I was like, I don't pass it to me. I was like, don't pass it to me. I think the actual hand might have blown up one second early. Just. I was like, I don't want that ball. I do not want that ball. But no, it was great. I mean, obviously injuries are part of life and sometimes it needs to slow down. But I've had better timings with things, but it doesn't matter. And ladies, where are you all from at home? I am from Greencastle in County Tyrone. I'm from Clamaris in County Mayo. I'm a proud Northside dub. Oh, oh Brady, yeah. Oh, oh. There's always one, Lance, there's always one. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Anything else you want to add about the... Uh, girls, always registering. Junior B is coming. Get on to us. Oh, no, you've said intermediate now next year, I presume. We'll go up to senior, senior. now. Oh, sorry, C senior. senior. Big dogs, oh. the big yeah. dogs, the big dogs. But we'll always Watch have a junior out. team. Look out. Junior B is starting in two weeks. And will you, uh, like, in terms of uh, ladies' football, do you, you don't have any summer sanctions or anything you like that? You two now going into senior. You get two summer sanctions. That you can bring in from yep. Ireland? Yeah. Um, and what, did you have sanctions today? No, no, no sanctions. You get your transfers, but they have to be in by March. So they're like tw 10 of them girls now are transferred over. Not all 10 starting, but what there was 10. They're transfer, transfer. So they transferred fully from their clubs because they've moved to New York. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so they're new, fresh meat. So like we have the draft system in the, in, in the men's where you go junior up to yeah, senior, so but, you're, but have you anyone from a different club playing with you not today? Right now, no, no, just ODR. Right. Just ODR. Yeah. All right. Fantastic, ladies. Thanks very much. Thanks, Congratulations. Thanks, podcast for all the support. Yeah. Always. Thanks so Love much. you. All right. 
Oh, you knew your girls, can you dance the polka too? And that's all for this week. Let us know what you think by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at The Long Haul Pod. And don't forget to check our website, thelonghaulpodcast.com, for all our latest episodes and for various Irish American sports news stories. The liquor was so awful strong, my head went round and round to me away. You Santi, my dear Annie. Oh, you New York girls, can you dance the polka to me? Why, you Santi, my dear Annie. Oh, you New York girls, can you dance the polka?